We each have a virtual guard dog that we need to work on training if we haven't already. It'll help us. Well, just like a real dog, a really well-trained dog is incredibly valuable. To right. You. So and just as an out-of-control dog is going to make your life very difficult. Very difficult, yeah. And remember, you'll understand his guard dog too, which will help deepen your relationship with him. everyone, welcome back to the Fascinating Womanhood channel, where we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships. I am Cherry Lynn, and I'm here with my mom, Dixie Andalyn Forsyth. Hi. Hi. So today we are talking about the guard dog, not an actual dog <laughs> for anyone new to our channel, but this is a this is something that refers to this imaginary guard dog in your mind. The concept came from Dixie's book, Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman. So if you haven't read her book, you definitely need to, because this video is really a continuation or a companion to what's going on in her book. And we've received a lot of questions about the guard dog. And we wanted to talk today about how to train your guard dog. So what are we talking about for those that have not read your book, or maybe you're a little bit unsure about what it means. What is the guard doc? Okay. This comes from the chapter on the brain uh, in my book called Brain Matters. There's the intuitive upper right part of your brain, the a logical left side of your brain that is more memorizes things, verbal and all that. And then the part that people don't talk about so much is the downstairs part of your brain which is really called the amygdala, but for, because we're not all scientists here, we talk yeah. about it through downstairs because it really is kind of like it's in the bottom part of your mind, your brain, and it deals with, some of it deals with heartbeat and, and all that and just survival stuff. Yeah. But it also deals with all the what ifs. And I know we all do what ifs, what if this, what if that, and the fears and things like that. So to make it easier to understand, we describe it as though there's kind of a a virtual guard dog then down there trying to protect you. Just like a real dog, it means well, but it, it isn't always very sophisticated and can't sometimes figure out whether something's real or imagined. So it just is trying to protect you. And sometimes it isn't very well trained, just like a real dog. If you have a, a dog and, and you don't train it, it'll totally run your house. If right. you don't, if you don't, someone's going to, it's either going to be controlled or you're going to be in control. And so this guard dog, although it's trying to protect you, sometimes gets in the way. If it looks like it might d be dangerous, the guard dog says it is dangerous, even if, even if it isn't. So we need to, in order so that this guard dog doesn't keep us panicked at the slightest thing, we need to learn how to manage it. And so that's why it's helpful to refer to us. Sometimes I'll say it about my guard dog's barking. Right. And that can happen if you're hungry, if you're tired, it, it, if it's saying, hey, we need attention, you need to take care of us. So, I mean, if, it, if you didn't have a guard dog, you might die of thirst because you just don't tell yourself you need to drink. How I mean, did you come up with this? And why did you decide to put it in your book about developing femininity? What is it? How does it all connect? It helps you understand not only yourself, which you need to first, but him, your husband. And I found it so helpful for me in my life and in my relationship with Bob. I wanted to share it with you because he's taught me these things. He's the one who came up with it being a dog. And I said, can I, can I use this? And he said, sure. Now, Bob doesn't get grouchy when he comes home usually, but when, if he's ever grouchy, it's like when he's really tired at night, he'll be kind of short and like he's more easily irritated. Yeah. So that's when I think, oh, he's tired. His guard, guard dog. It isn't personal. And so in yourself, we each have a virtual guard dog that we need to work on training if we haven't already. It'll help us to not be as afraid. Did dad come up with this from his practice? Do you think it's, it has a lot to do with him studying 
his patients and all of all of the work that he's done in his practice from his study of the brain. He just because he needs to. I ask bazillion questions, and because <laughs> he needs to explain things to me, he simplifies it. And he that's where he came up. He said, "Well, it's sort of like a, a dog," and well, he doesn't and tell people that. One thing that he told me that he does with his is that he had, he has gone as far as to name his, oh. and kind of like oh, that, what, what, oh yeah. he names it Sparky. Is that what it is? I don't he's remember sparky. what he called it. Yeah, he said it's Sparky. <laughs> it, he has a name for it, which I think is kind of cute. And it's like his own way of identifying that, okay, Sparky is barking. I think that's, I think that's uh, so smart. Uh, and I love that because it allows you to even go, you can even go as far as to figure out what kind of dog it is, which I think is kind of fun. Yeah. Because it allows you to kind of look at it with a fresher perspective of like, okay, Sparky, who is a golden retriever in there, you know, he's, he's barking where well, some people, their personalities, they may have a really yappy one. Yeah. You know or they mean? may have a big, a big German shepherd. That's really aggressive or a Doberman and pincher, or it may be just a cute little, uh, pink and ease. A, <laughs> a little fluffy. Well, I think it's interesting that he named it Sparky because Sparky sounds like a real friendly dog. And he's doesn't a sound real like, friendly person. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't sound like, like Rocky. <laughs> Car dog. Right. Yeah. Well, as you start to, to grasp this concept, you might start thinking about people in your life, p- perhaps your husband, perhaps yourself and saying, you know what? I imagine that my husband's dog is this, and this is what his name is. And I need to remind myself that sparky or rocky or whatever uh it always barks when he's hungry and i really need to accept that and it'll help you understand him better like you said mm-hmm. earlier and yourself so but so it we- is possible to train this virtual guard dog of yours so it doesn't run you and you're not always terrified or worried like what if what if what if all over the place and you have no control whatsoever well just like a real dog a really well-trained dog is incredibly valuable to right you. So uh, just as an out of control dog is going to make your life very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. So we're going to discuss five ways you can train your inner guard dog. The first one is probably the most important one and the easiest to do. Mm -hmm. Doesn't take any time is uh, practicing gratitude. And in my book, we also refer to that as the dopamine shower because dopamine is a natural chemical that your body produces when you feel safe, when you feel good. If you can allow yourself, when you're, especially when you're re- really scared or tense, to think about some things that you're sincerely grateful for, not just, yeah, this, 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 but things that you actually think about and allow yourself to feel the feelings of gratitude for it. Like, I'm really grateful that the sun is shining today. I love the sun. Or I'm really grateful that I look over and there's this man I love lying beside me in bed. I'm grateful for uh, my children and think about your child or your children and why you're grateful for them. When you feel gratitude, that's an incredibly good feeling. It makes you feel safe. It makes you feel like I'm really blessed. So gratitude can really help you overcome a lot of these things. And that helps to train the scar dog. Bob is an early riser and he, he does it when he's just lying in bed before he even gets up. He thinks about what he's grateful for. I think if you can do the same time, the same, same time every day, have some kind of ritual, I think that will really help you get into practice. I do mm-hmm. this in the shower. Mm-hmm. And like, that's the only time I feel like I have time to kind of like think is when I'm in the shower and that helps me a lot. But this is something that you have to find for yourself. Some people, it might be prayer. Some people, it might be like literally physically being alone and going on a walk and thinking these things, whatever it is for you, driving in the car. But I think kind of choosing a time every day, some people journal, Mm -hmm. just whatever works for you. It's such a huge impact on your mood. We all have things to be grateful for, many things. Even if something horrible happens, there's still always things to be grateful for. And if you can get in touch with those things, not just in your head, but feel it, you can feel yeah. the feelings of gratitude that can really help a lot. And as you practice it, it gets easier. And that actually helps calm your guard dog. And I didn't even mention deep breathing. That's, that's also really simple. When, when you're really scared, you've got some very scary news, for example, and you just, you, you don't realize it, but when, when you do, you often start breathing really shallow and you don't get enough air in. 
-hmm. and that makes you more stressed. Okay, number two, exercise. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when, I, before I knew about all this, when I'd be really anxious, I found that it helped me to get on my hands and knees and scrub the kitchen floor. I didn't realize this was exercise. It was because as you feel anxiety, your body produces negative chemicals and it's good to get rid of those and physical exercise can help to do it. What's funny about this one is this is actually how to train a real dog as well. <laughs> It's like, they, it goes both ways. Dogs have to have exercise. And I think that's why the guard dog uh, analogy is so strong. It makes so much sense because there's so many connecting things that go hand in hand with a dog guarding your downstairs and dogs. Absolutely. You, I mean, you know, they have to yeah, have they do. exercise or they act out. And so do virtual dogs. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this goes towards training this guard dog of yours. You can go to any of these things to deal with some of the stress that your guard dog's saying, but what if this happens? We're all going to die. And in that kind of feeling that you get sometimes. Well, if you don't like to exercise, I think there's always, like you just said, I thought that was a great example, like cleaning and scrubbing the floor. There's other ways that you can kind of get that energy. Physical out. moving is what we're talking about. Here. Whether it's you vigorously vacuum your house or clean something. And by the way, then you'll end up with a clean house. So, right. Yeah, that too. So the third one is physical touch. Because that also produces positive chemicals. If you're hugging, sitting close to touching somebody who cares about you, that also helps you. You can't always do that anytime you want if you uh, don't have children or somebody just handy, but that's something that you can know produces positive chemicals. This one reminds me of the video we did about greeting him. And, I, and I'm not just limiting it to greeting, but I think it reminds me of how important it is when your husband comes home or when, when you're saying goodbye, whatever it is, you can even do this with your kids. It's always a hug or a touch or some kind of greeting, goodbye, hello. And that to me, it's so easy to forget to do that with the people that you love. But uh, something that I learned a while ago, especially after we did that video is practicing doing that every day. Mm -hmm. It just feels so wonderful to have that habit. And now my husband's in the habit of doing it if I forget. And I think it's just, I, I love that this one and it's so small and simple, but and I know you and dad have always done this when oh, you go, so you always do an embrace and that, uh, that calming your guard dog is kind of surprising, but the way you're describing it as affection, I think is great. And if you're, if you're not married, it can be one of your parents, a friend, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a, a pet. <laughs> a pet. Yes. A pet. Okay. Number four distraction. sometimes if I'm really anxious about something and something that changes the subject like for me it might be music it might be a movie because you can't do those things and focus on anxiety at the same time so it changes the subject for a period of time and sometimes when you come back to it it allows you a little bit more logic to make sense of it like well I'm not actually going to die and or it won't always be like this or something like that. Distraction can help you. So music, movies, is um, Dancing. Are hobbies are hobbies distractions too? They can be, yeah, very much. It can be baking, it can be drawing, it can be music. Uh, sometimes I, when I'm really feeling nervous, I put on music that I found a channel that's heroic music or it's like bravery music. Yeah. And it, it really helps me So to do my work too. So the last one is a really important one, it's service. And that, because this one is also a distraction, but it's acts of kindness, no reward expected, realizing like we said other times that everybody is suffering with something in this world, some worry. When you can go outside of yourself and do something for someone else, that will help to train your guard dog. There's all kinds of ways to serve others. Helping someone, there's really no, no end to how you can be a benefit to other people. 
Yeah, it just it just shifts the focus off of you and puts it on to other people. And that will give you such a, a feeling of peace and accomplishment and confidence, like all those things that help you calm. It's almost like giving your dog a treat. <laughs> Except, okay, some people might say, well, how does this calm your guard dog or train it? Because it's teaching it when, when it goes to the bark, 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 wait a minute, you're overreacting. It's, we're going to get through this. It's going to be okay. We've, we've handled many things before. We will in the future. We're going to get through this. And you can. That's, that's how you help to train it. One example, quick example I have is I unfortunately learned to be afraid of flying. I wasn't when I was real young, but then I had a bad experience on a plane where I thought we were going to die and I was scared of flying. It was a horrible experience. Every time I flew anywhere, I dread it. My brother, whose physician, gave me some uh, Xanax, which I don't really like to take a lot of stuff. But he said, if I took just a half of a pill just before I flew, it would make me feel kind of normal. Mm -hmm. So I did. Every time I flew, I had this little security bottle and I'd take a half of a pill once to get there and once to get back. And I did that for several years. But the last two times I've flown, I found I did not need it. The reason is because I gradually trained my body that when I get into a plane, I, I kind of remember feeling calm. So you, you train yourself to remember this is, you know, I feel calm when I'm in this pl- space. Mm-hmm. So I just found I didn't need it. Service is like the equivalent to the Xanax. It's and like you're, you're training your body to have a different response mm-hmm. to some of this anxiety. And mm-hmm. that's, that's kind of what we're doing with training your guard dog is to say there's alternatives to just barking and going nuts. Right. There's other alternatives and there's a, there's a number of them. And there's even more in the book because it gets into a little more detail, but you, you can do this. And as you gradually do it, you'll find your guard dog isn't so much barking all the time. It's going quicker to solutions and it's going to be okay. And we've, we've handled things before. We're going to get through this. Yeah. And this takes a lot of practice. This is a lot. This is That's- a lifelong practice. Yeah, but it isn't like you have to be my age before you have any kind right. of sense of success with it either. You can you can do this. I mean, like we said, gratitude is instant. And and you can do also the physical exercise can be something you can do kind of almost on the spot unless you're at, sitting at a desk and you literally can't go anywhere. The, the gratitude you can do no matter where you are in a car, at work. Yeah. Anywhere. What I like about this list is it's it's a list of things that you can do that will prevent your dog from barking ahead of time, as well as a true approach while he's barking. So it's not just a reactive approach, it's preventative and reactive. And I really like that because I know for me personally, I need to take more of a preventative approach. Me too. I'm better at preventing the dog, like get the exercise in, get the gratitude in. And that way the dog will be calm meaning I will be calm later when things become a little bit harder versus I don't do as well just attacking the dog that's barking and saying, you got to be quiet. You need to stop it. Like it's not as, I'm not as good at that. So everyone has a different type of dog, different type of personality. And depending on how yippee, yappy your dog might be, meaning how worrying you might be um, or, you know, how, what your stress levels are like is going to, change how you want to approach training your guard dog. So I think this is a really great right. list. I know it's a lot of simple things, uh, very, very simple things, but they are things that- Well, you don't have to take an expensive course right. to, to <laughs> learn these things. They're all simple things that you can do and you can start today yeah. and to, to help you. And if you want to learn more about the upstairs, downstairs, the chapter nine in your book, all of that, you definitely need to not only read Dixie's book, like I mentioned earlier, I'll attach her book link to this video, but you should also watch the video we did on the downstairs and the upstairs. We did two different videos and we have dad featured in there explaining it very carefully. If you want to learn more, definitely watch those. Or if you've already watched those, maybe this one is a great companion to those two uh, to help you understand yeah. all of this because it's a lot. And I almost feel like you could have done a whole book on just this, but this I'm sure. Book. Yeah. Yeah. And remember, you'll understand his guard dog too, which will help deepen your relationship with him. Thank you so much for sharing all of this advice today. I think this is a really (laughs) valuable topic and kind of a fun one too. Thank you everyone for watching. If you have any questions, I'm sure you do. Drop them down below. We would love to hear from you. We are here every week. So don't forget to hit subscribe. So you know when we have a new video coming out. 
We're also very active on social media. So if you'd like to join any of our platforms, those are attached to this video, as well as all of the places that you can purchase our books and work. I think that's it. We'll see you next time. Bye. See ya. Bye.